I've got three friends who really like to shop, and each of those friends have three bags. In each bag are three shirts, and each shirt has three buttons. How many buttons in all? Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we are talking about powers and exponents. Okay, let's talk about all those buttons. So, if we remember, we had three friends. Each of those friends had three bags. Now, if you want to figure out, well, how many bags total, you would just do three times three. So, we are multiplying. That gives us the number of bags, but in each bag had three shirts. To find the number of shirts, again, we multiply that by three. But we don't want the number of shirts, we want the number of buttons. And there were three buttons on each shirt. So we're going to multiply that again by three. So if we want to know the total number of buttons, it's just three times three times three times three, which is, this is nine, times three is 27, times three is 81. So our final answer is 81 buttons, which is a lot of buttons. Now. Instead of writing 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which can kind of uh, be a little bit boring, there's a little shortcut. We could write that another way, and that is to use powers. So instead of writing the product like this, we could write this product as a power, and it would look like that. Let's talk about each little part of this power. So first, the whole thing is uh, called a power. And a power is just uh, another way of writing the product of repeated factors. Next, this 3 is called the base. And that just shows what factor is being repeated. Finally, the 4 is called the exponent. And an exponent just shows how many times uh, the base or the factor is being repeated. Okay, so the three is being repeated four times, just like here. One, two, three, four. Okay, uh, and all together we call that a power. Uh, just another way of showing repeated multiplication. It's like a shortcut. Okay, now let's talk about how you would actually read a power. Let's stick with three as the base. Uh, so this first one. 3 is the base, 2 is the exponent, how do you read this power? And 2, as an exponent, has a special word that we use, and we say squared. So this we would read as 3 squared. Okay. Anytime you see a 2 as an exponent, you would read it as squared. 3 is also special, it has a special name. Uh, so 3 we call cubed, so this would be 3 Cubed. And you can remember that like three dimensions looks like a cube is three dimensional. Uh, and same thing, a square is two dimensions. So that can help you with that. Um, everything else is very simple. So if the exponent is four, we would just say three to the fourth. Okay. Five would be three to the fifth, six, three to the sixth. Uh, 7, 3 to the 7th, and so on and so on. The only two you really got to make sure you remember are squared and cubed. Okay, let's try a couple examples. So write each product as a power. Notice it's just written as a product. We're going to change it to look like a power. So uh, first we see that 4 is what is being repeated. So that's going to be my base. Now I just need to count how many times it was repeated. So one, two, three, four, five fours, which means that is my exponent. So four times four times four times four times four as a power is four to the fifth. Let's try another one. Uh, again, what's being repeated? Well, 12 is being repeated. One, two, three times, that becomes my exponent. So my answer is 12 cubed. Remember, three we say cubed. Try a couple on your own. Okay, let's move on to another example. This one says evaluate each power. Well, first, 
What does it mean to evaluate? Well, if you look at the word, hopefully you notice something you see value. I mean, I know it's not spelled with an E, but uh, basically evaluate just means find the value of it. So this is written as a power, 7 squared. We want to find the value of that. Well, and to do that, we change it back to a product. So 7 squared means 7 is getting multiplied two times. 7 times 7. Oops, I'm sorry. Don't make that mistake. 7 times 7, which is 49. That's the value of 7 squared. Uh, next, 5. Hopefully you remember how to say that. Cubed. 5 cubed. The base is 5. 5 is getting repeated three times. Well, 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125, and that is the value of 5 cubed. Here's a couple to try on your own. Next, let's look at this list, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and 36. The question is, what does that, what do those numbers have in common? You take a look at that, maybe you can figure it out. And if you want, you can pause and see if you can figure it out. The thing that they have in common is they are all perfect squares. And a perfect square is just the square of a whole number. Okay, that's all it is. The square of a whole number. Okay. So for example, 1 is a perfect square because 1 squared is 1. 4 is a perfect square because 2 squared is 4, right? We're squaring whole numbers. 16 is a perfect square because 4 squared is 16. 36 is a perfect square because 6 squared is 36. And obviously there's an infinite amount of perfect squares. So let's try some examples dealing with perfect squares. Okay, here's our last example. Determine whether each number is a perfect square. So the first one, 64, is that a perfect square? Basically you gotta think, is there a whole number when squared would equal 64? And hopefully you have uh, some of your uh, squares memorized and hopefully you know that 8 squared is equal to 64, so 64 is a perfect square. Now how about 20? Same thing. Is there a number that we can times by itself, that we can square, that would give us 20? The product of 20. And hopefully you're not thinking, well, 2 times 10. But remember, you have to multiply the same number by itself. Uh, so no, it's not. right? 4 squared is 16. 4 times 4 is 16. 5 squared is 25, so there is no number that we multiply, uh, no whole number that we multiply by itself to get 20. So 20 is not a perfect square. Here's some to try on your own. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.